Good afternoon, I'm Tina Laster and you're back at Laster Farm. Today, Steve and I are in the garden and it's in the afternoon and it's cooled off a little bit because this morning it was hot out here. And so, we're weeding this garden today. I know I'd like to be doing something else besides weeding, but the grass has taken over and we've got to get this under control. So, let's go. All I'm doing is I'm taking my little three-pronged little rake and I'm just going through the soil and I'm just turning it over and it just pulls it all up. It makes it real easy to get the grass out of the way. And I'm hoping that it'll move rather quickly because this is something that I just don't care nothing about doing. When I've got other things going on around the farms, I'd love to be doing. But I just come in and just peel it up. And then I go through and pick out all the grass pieces and just throw it out. Now, I could be throwing this over to the chickens or I guess I really need to be getting a bucket and collecting it for the chickens because they, I'm sure they would love to have it. Nice. So probably what I need to be doing. Okay. okay, let me go grab a bucket. came back from getting the kids from tutorial today we ended up getting these three trellises in back there where Steve is weeding we had one the middle one already up but one of our braces kind of broke to that and so we had to come back and uh, brace it and then we put the other two in so that's looking good back there and I hope that they stay up and that the wind don't take them over. Get over here on the other side and uh, get it tilled. I may end up having to hand pull a lot of this over here close to the plants because I do not want to pull up my okra.
way to know that our cabbage is making a comeback and our potatoes they're looking really good today and we got a rain last night and our squash has just really exploded it's kind of rained the last couple of days on and off and uh, it has really made it come alive Okay. Grass yes, and Steve said grass too. The grass is just really, really abundant. One bed down. One bed down. Now off to bed number two. makes it so much easier to um, get that grass up when you till it like this with your little hand till, little hand rake.
weeding these beds is nothing like it is if you're weeding it growing out of the ground. Look down here what it would be like. If we had this in garden and we were having it fresh out of the soil on the ground instead of in these raised beds, it would be a nightmare. It would absolutely be 10 times as much grass growing. Okay. Okay. Bed number two down. Off to bed number three. Now, this one has got a little bit more grass in it than these two beds has. But they're a little taller, so maybe they'll be easier to pull out. Okay. Definitely need to stake these tomatoes. is a great tomato. So I think I've really grown. is if you don't get that grass out of there even though you're weeding it with your little little uh, little rake as soon as it comes another shower all of these little grass seedlings will be right back up and more <coughs> dark and rich it's so good well you can tell because these tomatoes have only been in the ground for two weeks so they have really come alive but it's not just the soil it's God's rain because the nutrients from the rain oh it's just does wonders for your garden
myself there sitting on a bucket waiting. <laughs> Find me a bucket here in a minute. I'm too short though for a bucket. I'll have dirt up to my armpits if I sit down trying to weed. about that so maybe the kids can get out and help some in the garden this summer while school was going on I didn't pressure them to get out here and help do a lot but now that school's going to be out they need to learn how to you know work a garden how to plant how to harvest and what you do with it after you harvest it you're going to can it or put it in the freezer or how to preserve it. I think every person needs to learn how to do that at any age because we have lost the old ways. We've lost it being taught from generation to generation and there's only a handful of us left that are teaching others how to do it. And uh, and I believe that, you know, God gives us certain callings, and I believe that's one of mine, is teaching what I know of how to preserve and how to homestead. But, um, it just kind of comes natural to me, I guess, because even though my parents had a homestead and they raised you know different things you know kids wasn't allowed to you know they wasn't allowed to really get in there and get their hands dirty and help with it you know kids was kind of like out of sight and out of mind and go on out of the kitchen that sort of thing because a lot of you know they just didn't want their kids and grandkids trampling under feet and I'm kind of like that to a degree but I think my kids need to know how to do things you know, because my great grandmother and my grandmother, I don't think she really got in there and taught my mother how to do things, you know. I think she had to learn them on her own. And that's basically what I've had to do. Now, I will sometimes call mama if I don't know something, I'll call her and say, you know, how do you do this? And then usually my answer is, well, I don't know, teen. I don't know. Because, you know, she never did write anything down that, you know, from her grandmother or her mother and all that. But now you can just about Google anything that you want to learn how to do or get on YouTube and they're going to have you an answer for it. So, I suggest if you want to learn how to do something, find you a person that that's a little bit older than you that's been through it and knows how to do it and uh, ask them to teach you how because I'm sure these elderly people would love to te teach the younger ones how to do things because us as parents and um, get busy with our kids and the grandparents sometimes kind of get left out and kind of put on the back burner sometimes because you know you don't go visit them as much because you're so busy with your everyday life 
but I'm sure they'd be glad to teach you what they know. I'm sure there's somebody in your church, some little old lady in church that's just be itching to teach you how to do things. This bed definitely has a little bit more dirt in it. I mean, a little bit more grass in it. Our horn is blowing. Our horn is blowing. Best is up there hollering. Guess you can hear him. Well, I'm not believing it. What? These have been out for two weeks, and we've got a little bit of blooms, but we also have some little tomatoes. There's two. They're about the they're about the size, I guess, of your hand or your finger. Sweet one hundred. Um, this is yes, sweet one hundred. So these are the little Tommy toes. They're gonna start taking over the place like they did last year. They were, I had hundreds of little 100s. And the plants got so big, they fell over on the ground. And they went out from these beds about three or four feet over there. I had them on that side where the cabbage and where the um, squash are. And they really took over. And the kids were out here eating off of them. They love them. Kids do. Millie, she loves those little, those little tomatoes. And so does Liz. But uh, you can't get Millie to eat a big tomato. Big red tomato. Well, I take that back. I think she has ate a big tomato. But she'll eat salsa and stuff like that. But if I cook chili or anything with chunks of tomatoes in it, any types of soups, She's picking it out. Or even if I fix a uh, rotel chicken, and you know, you put the uh, rotel in there, and it's got the red chunks in there, she will take them out. allergies has really been bothering him this week. He's, I think what got it started, he's not supposed to mow the yard. So he got out there mowing. And I think he even did some weed eating. But he handed it over to the kids. 
and he goes in Moses daddy's yard but he's not really supposed to be out there thought he's gonna have to have a breathing treatment or inhaler and he hasn't had to have it in a while so <coughs> peppers in the greenhouse but my mother's day rock just about through up here so let me get this little corner Bed number three complete. Oh. And it's looking good. This little space right here, I'm gonna plant those peppers in here, but they're still not very tall, probably about like this. So I wanna give them a chance to kinda grow just a little bit more so they'll have a better chance to make it out here. And won't be so beat down from the rain. Okay. And looks like Steve has gotten halfway done. He did the back side. He started down here and went all the way down on that back side. And it looks like he's down here. How's it coming? But doesn't it look better? Doesn't that look better down through there? Oh, yes. And look at this little hot mess. Ooh. So that's our, <laughs> that's my next bed right there. But what Steve was talking about, he was talking about my Mother's Day rock. That's what I'm calling it. Because my son Taylor, this morning, brought me had this delivered this is not a 33c this is a number eight rock and this is 25 tons and this is what i'm putting in between my garden beds it's not like 33c Okay, 33C will pack into concrete. This is just like the crushed limestone stuff that I was wanting to put down. But this is not like pea gravel. You know how pea gravel slips under your feet? This doesn't do that. And I'm so excited about getting this put down. Oh my goodness. He come knocking on the door this morning. He said, Mama, have you come out and seen your rock? And I said, no, let's go look at it. So I was so excited when he brought it up. So I came out here and he said, that's some good looking rock. I said, I know, I love it. I know it is, it's great. And so that, we're gonna be stepping on that in between our beds instead of all that grass and all that mud we have. And so I'm not nowhere near ready to put it down. Get in there and we've got to till some of this land over here. I'll just show you. See right here, all this has got to be tilled and moved out of the way. Over here where the grass is, where we're going to put it, it's got to be tilled out of the way. I'm going to have to put up posts down through here and put a uh, five quarter board at the bottom or a landscaping timber to hold my rock in because I'm going to put it all out in here all in this space 
around my garden beds. That's another project. <laughs> yeah, so that's another project. Uh, and so I guess that's project number 10. Um, I think I think we have stopped counting on how many projects it really is that we've started. But Steve is making me get out here today and he's making me not start on anything else. He's making me weed my garden, which I'm glad he's making me do because we need to do it. It's just very hot. I'm wringing wet. My feet are soaking wet in these boots, but it's going to be a lot better. But we're going to have to do a little dirt work. Move that big pile of dirt up here on the hill somewhere is what I'm thinking, out of our way. Because that's where we're going to end up using it. But we've always got something going on out here. Something. But we are so far ahead of what I thought we would be. Because you know, like I told you earlier this year, in February, for me to get out there in February, March, and April, when it was cold doing this and when it was rainy and wet and muggy, I wouldn't have never done that. But I guess God has kind of motivated me to get out here and get it done because I really want to see it come to life this year. This, I kept saying this was going to be the year and I kept hearing God say, this is going to be your year. This is going to be the year it's going to get done. And so I'm holding on to what God said and I know the majority of things that I wanted to get done this year, I know God's going to allow it to happen. Like the greenhouse, my tool shed, that's the main thing, and my chicken coop, and my garden. That was the main four things that I wanted to get done this year. And number five, fencing in. So, and really, the uh, little guest house was not on that list, but I'm hoping by the end of the summer, we'll be over there on that project and off of all this. But we still have a lot to do because we added a wall. We gotta add a wall over here. <laughs> added a wall to our list and our project list. But we're gonna get back to weeding and we'll holler back at you here in a second. Okay. Steve and I got all of our beds weeded. And so now I'm tying up our tomatoes to our trellis that we've got up. And it's a pretty stout little trellis. I'm hoping that we don't have to come back and reinforce it with some T-posts, but we might. Um, I'm going to, um, like I said, tie these tomatoes up and then I'm going to come back with the scissors and I'm going to clip the lower ones that are touching the ground. That way our tomatoes won't get any disease from, you know, coming up out of the earth. So I'm going to do that. So all I do is I still use the old fashioned tomato string like my daddy used to use. Now, I know a lot of people use the little zip ties or the little Velcro ties or the felt ties to tie them up. Or you can just take an old uh, tea cloth and rip it up into strips or any type of cheesecloth or anything like that and tie your tomatoes up. But a lot of people say when the tomatoes get so big and they get so weighty that this cuts into them, I've never had that problem. But, not to say that it won't ever happen, I just like using something more uniform and it just kind of blends in with my old trellises that I have up. And it's not a big eyesore out there to me because, you know, when I get to looking at it, I'm kind of like, gotta have everything kind of symmetrical and it's just me. But, um. I'm gonna tie this on that. Well, that's a little taller. I'm gonna tie it up here. But I make a loop tie in that bottom tie when I'm tying it to the plant. And I make it loose probably, I don't know, several inches out from the plant so it'll give the plant room to grow. Come back in a minute after I get this row tied up and show you how I trim off my tomatoes. I've already said that I wasn't going to cut off any of my suckers this year. I know the plants could get big and they could get out of control, but it's just a little experiment that I'm doing. 
and I believe that we're going to get more harvest, more yield from these tomatoes by not cutting these suckers off. Because when we cut the suckers off, a lot of times it has a lot of blooms and you're cutting off, you know, over half your plant through the season if you're cutting and taking all the suckers off. And I know you can set those suckers back out and root them and make more tomato plants, but that's not my goal here. My goal here is to take these plants that we spent our good hard money on and turn these plants, these plants into something real productive. And I'm hoping with this horse manure that we're gonna make some good good plants. It's going to be some good fertilized soil here. And you can tell by looking at them just, just in the two weeks that they've been set out how good they've grown. I mean, they are doing so good. And I'm real excited about it. Because last year my tomato plants didn't do as good as I wanted them to do over there in the ground. My soil, even though we put some compost on it, our soil was nowhere near what it needed to have been to produce some good tomatoes. And also, we had, you know, a lot of people around us, the farmers were spraying last year and I hate to say it, but it really did kill some of my, well, I'm going to say not just some of them. It stunted all of my tomato plants and my peppers. It was just really a waste of money last year and several years in the past. So I'm, I'm so thankful this year that, uh, that they called ahead of time and said, hey, we're spraying and, and really, they really have been great about watching and not doing it on a windy day and i'm so thankful for that down through here. I should say Steve and I did putting these trellises in. Broke some of the tops out. So okay. Now let me just take you along down here. We'll start down here on the end. Okay. Down here around the bottom of the plant, these are touching the ground. Now, I'm not going to trim off every one of them that are touching the ground. I'm just going to clip off the, you know, ones that are really low. Now, because some of these are going to be touching. But that'll make the roots go deeper when you trim on the tops of it. It'll make them go down. So, and take some of these that down here. And I will probably come back and I will trim some more. As this plant grows taller, I may come back and trim some more up on underneath. But that's all I'm gonna do. these down here around the bottom and them all they're touching okay. that one looks pretty good I don't want to stress them too much just get down here under the plant and take out some of these 
Well, there's one more right here that wants to touch. That one too, but we'll just leave that. Let's get some of these down here low. still stand to take some more off but we'll come back and do that later once they start growing up a little taller there we go let me cut, cut this one that's touching get that one out of the way Grab this one. Okay. Got the ones that were really low to the ground. And it kind of thins them out a little bit, but not too much. They're still nice and Cool. Looks like this one here is broke. Let's just go ahead and clip that. All right. I am. I have several down here that I've got to tie up, and then the other side. But I think they're going to be pretty. And our garden, with all the weeds out of it, looks so much better. All the weeds are now out. It just looks so much better. And Steve is over there cleaning out my herb bed. Well, Steve has got all of this weeded. Well, he's still working on it. And right there beside him is my little poke plant, my little poke salad. <laughs> and there's some more poke salad growing down there beside the end of the greenhouse. Really tall. And I may end up just cutting it down. I was thinking about just harvesting it that's why i haven't done away with it so anyway i kind of like poke salad with scrambled eggs but not a lot of people do you just have to know how to cook it well here's that garden all nice and weighted I am still working on tying up tomatoes on this side now. But all of this is done and I am so glad. I still have to get in here 
and I started spooning on my I started spooning on my onions and you can tell some of them are getting to be pretty good size but all spooning is is taking your finger and just removing the dirt up next to the bulb and back in the day the women used to take a spoon instead of their finger and they would move the dirt out from around the onion plants and it's I just caught on to be called spooning and that's all you have to do is remove some of the dirt and I still have to go and do that thank you for joining me here today I have got my tomatoes uh, tied up and I still have a little bit more to go and then I've got them trimmed and then I need to get over here and I need to spoon the rest of these onions and get those completed. But Steve and I have gotten our garden finished weeding except for the herbs. And he is almost finished over there with those. And I'm so thankful he got over there and did that bed where I could tie these tomatoes up. Because it's been a long time coming with the rain. And so we're just now getting a chance to get that done. So anyway, thank you for joining us here today and thank you for subscribing to my channel. We're just a few away from having 100. We're still not there yet. So please share, share, share and get us to that 100 marker so we can give away our gift basket. And also, um, we are going to uh, continue to get out here every day and do just a little bit along and just improve our farm just a little bit more each day well i'm gonna get off of here and finish what i was doing god bless you until next time we'll see you back here at laster farm bye